How to install Jenkins on Ubuntu 22.04. Here's where we're starting today. I have a fresh installation of Ubuntu 22.04. The only thing I've done to it so far is I've done an apt update and an apt upgrade. So all of the base packages have been fully upgraded. Down in the description of this video is a link to a gist that has links off to all the documentation and all of the commands that I'm running. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to install a JDK. So let's go over to adoptium.net. And right here, we have the installation instructions to install Timrin 11 JDK, that's the version that we're going to use, on this Ubuntu 22.04 box. So what we're going to do is we're just going to follow these one by one. Also, one more item here is that I am logged in right now as a normal user. I am going to go ahead and become root. That will help make everything else a little bit easier. I don't have to do sudo every time. So let's do an apt install for wget and apt transport https. Okay, let's go ahead and get our gpg key. Copy that, paste that there. That's done. Let's go ahead and configure the repository. Okay, and finally, let's go ahead and install the version that we need, which is going to be 11. So first off, we need to update in order to get the repository to show up. So let's do that. And now we can see that we have the packages from adoptium.net. And now let's go ahead and do our apt get install and we'll switch this out to 11. Okay, there's 11. Yes, all that looks good. Let's go ahead and check that. Java dash version showing 11.0.15. So at this point, we're ready to install Jenkins. Let's go over to Jenkins.io. We click on download, that takes us to the download page. Let's scroll down. And we want to do install the LTS version at the time of recording. The most recent version is 2.332.3. Let's click on Ubuntu Debian. And then much like what we did to install our JDK, let's do the same basic thing for installing our version of Jenkins. So let's go ahead and grab the key. Then let's get the repository. Next up, we need to run our update. And if we take a look at the instructions, at least at the time that we're recording this, it's saying that we need to install font config and open JDK. Well, we've already installed our JDK. We know the JDK is fine, so we're going to skip that step. And now we're just going to do the installation of Jenkins. So let's go ahead and click on apt-get install. Before we hit enter, we can see here that our Jenkins repository has now been synced into this machine. So now let's go ahead and do the installation. We can see now it's going to install net tools because that's what's needed for this box and Jenkins. So let's click on yes. Okay, now that the installation is complete, one of the things that the package gives us is it goes ahead and automatically starts up Jenkins for us. So we can just do a PS. Whoops, there we go. And we can see down here at the bottom, we see our Jenkins process running and here's the process. But since this version of Jenkins supports system D, we can also run system CTL dash dash full status and Jenkins. And here we can also see our process running for our headless true Jenkins war web root HTTP port being 8080. And we see a little snippet of the log. So at this point, we know that everything's loaded, it's active and running. So from a system D perspective, everything looks good. But what we really want to do is make some changes to our startup parameters, because these base startup parameters, the headless parameter and web root is not enough. We want to add in some extra settings. So how do we do that? Now that we have systemd available to us, we can make all the changes through the standard systemd processes. So let's go ahead and quit out of this. Now I could go ahead and do a system CTL edit, but before I do that, I want to go ahead and set the preferred editor on this machine. By default, it goes to nano, but I prefer VI. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to update my editor. So let's go ahead and update alternatives. And here I'm going to select number three for Vim basic. So now when I make the changes to my system CTL edit, it's gonna be using VI instead of nano. Also, before we start editing, I want to go ahead and stop the service. So I'll do system CTL stop Jenkins. Let's double check that. Okay, Jenkins is not running. Okay, good. And now let's go ahead and do a system CTL edit Jenkins. And what you're going to see here is anything between here and the comment below, this comment, will become the new contents of the file. So this gives you the ability to quickly see what changes you can make. You can scroll all the way through this and take a look at all these default settings that are available within our configuration file. 
Now I've already gone ahead and set up the environment variables off to the side and I'll go ahead and bring those in real quick. So what I'm going to do is go grab those. All of the variables that I'm adding in are in the services block. So if you'll notice here, there is right below the start here, there is a unit block and there is a service block. And if you go all the way to the bottom, there's also an install block. So those are the three big blocks within a configuration file for system D. But in my case, the only changes I'm making are to two environment values, one for Java ops and one for Jenkins ops. Now, if you think back to what our PS looked like or what our status looked like, we can see headless equals true, but we didn't see any of these other things. I'm adding in preferring IPv4. That's up to you, but that's what I like to do. We're adding in a tempter. Now this tempter does not exist yet. So if you're watching this, be sure to stick through for another couple minutes because you need to understand how to set this up. This is completely optional, but I like having control over where my tempter lives. I'm also setting up a time zone for New York. And then also I'm setting up a plugin route for Jenkins Ops. So when my controller starts up, then when those plugins extract, they're going to extract into this plugin route instead of within my Jenkins home directory. These are the only changes I want to make. Notice I did not make any changes to my XMS or XMS for my memory settings. That's because this is not going to be a long running Jenkins controller. This controller is just for this demo setup. In real life, you would go ahead and set up proper XMS and XMS values inside of Java Ops. So as a reminder, what we're doing, anything between here and the comment, this comment here, lines will be discarded. So when we save this, it's going to create a file named override.conf inside of Jenkins.ServiceD. Let's go ahead and save this. And remember I said that we needed to set up our tempter. Let's go ahead and set up that tempter because it does not exist, nor will the system D process create this directory for us because I've specified a directory that Jenkins doesn't know anything about. So let's go ahead and create our directory in the same place that I specified it. And I also, since I'm root, I need to go ahead and change the ownership of this directory to the user of the process, which in our case is Jenkins. And then finally, let's take a quick look at our status. Now we haven't started it yet, but let's see what it looks like. So status full Jenkins. Notice what this looks like. If you think back or rewind just a little bit, when we set this up, we saw the loaded, but this is something new. This is the override comp file. This is the settings that we just created within our system CTL edit. And then it's inactive because we haven't started it yet. Also, I want to take a look at one more thing before we start it. I'm going to say system CTL show Jenkins. And by doing this, we can see all of the different variables that system D process is actually using within our environment. We can see our exec start. If we scroll down a little bit further, what we're going to see are our environment variables. Here's our Jenkins home, Jenkins web root. But then if you scroll a little bit to the right, you're going to see Java ops. And this Java ops has the values that we have specified. There's our tempter. Here's the settings for our time zones. And also we see the Jenkins ops here for our plugin root. So everything looks as expected within this configuration file. Let's go ahead and quit out of this. And let's go ahead and start our Jenkins process. Now that it's started, let's go ahead and take a look at the status. So system CTL full status Jenkins. Again, like what we saw when the service was stopped, we see our loaded, we see our drop in, and now we see active running. And then if we were to scroll right here, what we're going to see is still our headless true, our prefer IPv4. Here's our tempter. If we keep scrolling right, we're going to see our two time zones. We keep scrolling right some more, we'll see web root. But then at the very end, we see our plugin root that we specified for our Jenkins ops. So let's go back left. We see a little snippet of our log here at the bottom. But what if I wanted to look at my full log? Well, now that we're using system D, what we can do is we can run journal CTL u Jenkins. And this is going to show the full log for our controller. And if I jump to the bottom, I did a shift G. We can see that, that the initial setup is required. Here's the password that we can use. I'll just copy that. Let's flip over to our browser. If we open up a new tab, what we're going to see is Jenkins 8080. That's how I have it set up. We paste in that password, click on install suggested plugins. Let's create our initial user. Oops, there we go. All right, here we go. One, two, three. One more here. Click save and continue. Verify our URL. 
save and finish. And now my controller is fully set up and we can start using Jenkins. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.